Here we go. This is how we're going to begin. Are you ready? Ready. With a... Excuse me. <laughs> it's not a fart. <laughs> it's a card thingy. I can't remember what that's called. Cardistry? That's the art of card manipulation. Isn't that what you're doing? But I can't remember what that thing is that I just did is called. It's got some sort of name. Anywho, what are people listening to? Energyislovepodcast.com. <laughs> hopefully they're I remember listening. the dot com. Hopefully they're listening to the Energy is Love Podcast. Uh. And hopefully they've gone and subscribed on whatever platform they're choosing to listen to. And hopefully, if you have any questions, you can go to energyislovepodcast.com. Good job, babe. Dot com, you reminded me. And last but not least, thank you for tuning in and listening and subscribing and sharing and all of those wonderful things that all of our great listeners do, Barb included. Oh, foremost. Yeah. For, first and foremost, first and for, Barb. See. I forgot the first. I'm sorry. Foremost. Yeah. Well, she is the first. She's our number one fan. Is she? Should we give Barb a last name? Um, maybe. Barb Barbarella. Barbara. Well, yes. <laughs> That's definitely going to have to stick. I was. That's her name, Barb Barbarella. Remember, this is the promo. I know. This is the promo. This is the intro. This is the beginning of the episode before the episode. And uh, this episode is brought to you by InBody Yoga Academy. Yeah. InBody is located at 1597 South, 1100 East in Salt Lake City, Utah. Go to InBodyYogaAcademy.com. Find all the information about their amazing studio there. They have a variety of classes taking place on a daily basis. They also do um, yoga teacher training, mindfulness training, uh, really just a whole bunch of different wonderful, amazing things. And so if you are new to yoga, that's a great place to start. If you are a an experienced yogi, if I can get all of those words out properly, uh, that's also a great place to go. Highly recommended by the folks here at the Energy is Love podcast. <laughs> but go show them some love. Go check them out. Uh, you can also find them through our website at the uh, partners link up top. You can click and then go to their website and drop in for a class. If I'm not mistaken, if it's your first class, it's free. But go show them some love. So, beautiful woman of mine, today's episode is, oh, we already did who the episode is, but today's episode is brought to you by us and Hot Coffee, as well as the previous sponsor mentioned, <laughs> <laughs> and we are about to discuss, I know what we're going to discuss, Okay. but Stephanie does not, so I'm going to leave it up to a mystery for all he of you. He likes to be in the know. It's a power play. I like to put my nose in <laughs> places kidding. that it does not belong. <laughs> But it's going to be a good episode. Do you have faith, my love? Always. Faith. Because you've got to have faith. 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 Remember I was telling you about my dream? Yes. Was, was George Michael in it? No, George Michael was not in it. But Garth Brooks Did was sing singing faith? faith. Wow. In my dream. Is that a thing? No, it's not. I don't know. Except for in Craig's dream. We might have to Google. I Google can totally hear Garth him Brooks rocking faith. out <clears throat> the country faith. Yeah. So this episode is brought to you by Country Faith in my dreams. Oh. <laughs> and uh, here we go, folks. Sit back, relax, enjoy, slow down, listen, and turn it up. Here we go. You're listening to the Energy is Love podcast. Energy is love. The Energy is the love podcast. The Energy is love podcast. Energy is love. The Energy is love podcast. The podcast for the universe. The Energy is love podcast. On today's show. <laughs> <laughs> You're cute. I totally just did the Wayne's World countdown, silent lead in, point to her, it's time to go, and rolling. Uh, and you nailed it, babe. Uh, thank you. Should I have started off with Wayne's World, Wayne's World? Party time. Excellent. Excellent. Can we... Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it's kind of sad that we remember that. I, I don't think it's sad, but thanks for... Taking a bonding moment and making me feel like a, oh, a, work. That's okay. it's a bonding that's moment. Good. So special. You and I, worlds apart, watched the same movie back in the day. <laughs> it was meant to be. <laughs> I have a question. I have an answer. We talked, I don't remember if it was last one or the one before, but we talked about that um, 
that Instagram account that I liked, the nude yoga girl and what I thought. Oh, not booty facial girl or mm, booty no, facial Instagram, but no, the nude no, yoga girl. The nude yoga. And I couldn't find it. And then we were going to put it in show notes, but I forgot. Yes, we did not put it in so the show notes. So I have it. Should I say it now or do you want to put it, just go back and edit and put it in the show notes? I definitely will not be doing that. So well, not now like, would be the I time. mean, just like the typey. No. No. Well, you can just do the typey on this one. Uh, yeah, but go ahead and mention it. Go so ahead then and people it. that are just listening. Not sponsored by, however, if she would like to. It's um, Nude Yoga Girl, but the handle is nude underscore yoga girl. I'm going to go look now. Okay. I can send it to you. That would be great. I will do that. Do that. Hold on. Now that you showed me how to do that. I Wait, hold on. I can find it. Oh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you my phone, and then you're going to send it to yourself. Okay, I'll just look for it. No, I can do it. Why isn't it the little three thingies? Uh, the little three thingies? You knew send that name. Send profile as a message. There you go. There we go. It's on your way. On the way. On your way. Nude underscore yoga girl? Yeah, the three thingies, when it's the line, it's the hamburger. But I don't know what the dots are. Maybe it's a French fry. When it's the line, it's the hamburger? When it's the three lines. I went to some like social media funny class. Okay, and... this lady has 1.1 1. 1 million uh, yeah, followers. Yeah, it's amazing. So and I'm she is fairly fantastic. certain she does not need our support, but at the same time, <laughs> it never hurts. So I if you want to, I don't think she needs it. I don't th <laughs> think she's doing just fine for herself she's, here. She's doing just fine. That way, I'm not like trying to like. <laughs> but if you want to go support a uh, nude yoga girl, feel free. Yeah, that's fun. I like the ones that she does with a friend. Does she have a friend that she does yoga poses with? She does. I don't, well, I don't know if it's like friend, sister, or what, but there's, and there's some pretty cool, but that's not very often. There's that pose, uh, I've seen it before, where they I'm do sure. like crisscrossy feet, mm -hmm. crisscrossy arms, and then it looks like all this. This right cool here. Cool little, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a cool thing. It is a cool thing. That's Anyhow, actually an easiest one. I'll follow her. It's super easy. I'm sure you will. I'm sure her life is better now. It is. Like all the support she needs. <laughs> no. At 1.1 1. 1 million uh, followers, she does not need uh, us to follow. Thanks. I don't think she... God, quit making me feel like crap about it. Like oh, she doesn't need... I, I know she doesn't. I making you feel like crap. I was saying you about what it meant to me and what how cool I thought it was. Was that last episode that we I talked about I, that? I don't remember. Hmm. I don't know if that was the last one or the one before that. Yeah, it's one of those. Let me go look. Oh, jeez. Hold on. I'm going to listen to all previous episodes prior to this one. <laughs> I think it was the booty facial one. Yeah. Yeah. So episode 177. It, mm -hmm. I don't think it was the great balls of lightning. I don't. Th I think you're right. I think booty facial. I don't know. Because we were talking about Instagram and everything during that episode. True. So. It's probably that one. Who listening, knows? folks. Uh, folks that are listening, tomorrow, we're recording this on a undisclosed day in time and history, but uh, tomorrow we are going to Finally. Brandy Carlisle again. So back in December, we had tickets to her concert. She was sick. It was canceled and rescheduled, and tomorrow is the day that it was rescheduled for. So we're not going to talk about it on this episode. No. But guess what next episode's going to be about. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a good high probability that next episode will be about the concert experience. And and I'll probably be crying. Yeah. that's what happens. I thought about I that in my dream. Me crying over Brandy? Yeah, because last night I dreamt about Brandy and um, some of her band members and uh, hanging out with them at some outdoor concert venue. And like, we were totally like- We were like hanging out with them? We were in the click. Like we, we were, were yeah. in oh the, it, it wasn't like, oh, hi, as they walked by. We were like in, we were in hanging out with them. So it was very, very cool. But uh, in, my, in my dream, I thought about the fact was if this was real, because I must have had enough clarity you to realize- You almost lucid dreamed. I realized that I know, you would point. be crying. I would be crying. Yeah, that's okay though. I, it was. It's absolutely it's okay. okay. I feel like I don't know. I always thought that was a funny thing when people would be crying over musicians and they're up there singing, and I'm like, oh, that's cute. And then, oh my god, like, what's what's happening? <laughs> the old <laughs> like, black and white uh, footage from the, the Beatles, Beatles and stuff. Yeah, and no, it's it's a thing. Her music. 
moves me that deeply that I see her and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. One of the things that we are going to do tomorrow before the concert is uh, go into Salt Lake City. Hopefully. And hang out around downtown areas, and we are going to run into somebody from her entourage of castmates. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but our goal is to go meet Brandy and or the twins, and I, I was thinking Tanya, too. Yeah. Tanya's probably going to be walking around. So high probability that... Should I start singing my favorite song to them? That they sing? Yes. That should happen, right? That should That's totally happen. That's a normal happen. thing. Uh-huh. All these things are going to be really <sighs> normal when we run across them in the middle of I'm not downtown gonna be. I'm not going to be able to move my legs. It's going to be like I'm up high on something and my legs are just going to go, uh, and I'm going to be like, uh. <laughs> it's not going to work. But that's the goal. Cry. That's the goal of what we're going to do tomorrow. Actually, you know what's going to happen? What? I'm going to put this out there. I am going to be graceful and... I can't remember the word that describes the being like able to speak. So yeah, that's a good thing. That's definitely going to um, happen. Then. I'm going to be able. To, I'm going to be able to use my words. My throat chakra is going to be open, and I'm going to be able to communicate in a non weird way. So it's not going to look weird, and I'm not going to cry, and I'm just going to be graceful, and then it's going to be fine. And they're going to like me. They are going to like you. And then when we part ways for the day, because we're making dinner plans for later. Mm-hmm. Cause they're gonna want to hang out with us more because that's how cool I'm gonna be, and then I'll cry to you. Yeah, no, if they want to hang out more, mm -hmm. we're hanging out with them. Oh, wait, that's what I was if saying. If they want us to be like, hey, why don't you guys just come backstage? Okay, yeah, well, that's gonna that's what I'm saying. That's gonna happen, and then because... they're like, why don't you just come on tour with us for the rest of the our lives? And we'll be like, okay, okay, yeah, we'll it's to totally quit, normal. Quit the jobs that we don't really have. No, I'm gonna use we're gonna use the jobs that well, yeah. yes. And then we were going to bring our services to them. I thought we weren't talking about Brian. I know, episode. so we're done. Uh, but we but, will catch you up next week on the next episode of the podcast and tell you about our adventures and how we did, in fact, meet somebody hopefully. from maybe the guy that carries our guitar. But uh, I'm okay with that too. <laughs> yeah. No, we're going to see her. We're going to see her. And we're going to see her. We're going to meet her. We're going to get to shake her and hand. If you are, have not yet listened to Brandy Carlisle, I say go do that right now grammy award winning will, world change forever okay enough with brandy i love her <laughs> so are you ready for what i want to talk to you about i am yeah, yeah. there's actually a couple of little silly things that we can get out of the way Let's we can get some it. housekeeping items Let's out of the way some okay that means that it's a whopper that you it's have it's not a whopper and i just decided in this moment that i'm gonna go vegan so i don't want a whopper <laughs> You could never go vegan. I know. You like the meat too much. <laughs> um, there was hopefully <laughs> obvious undertones. No. So real quick, yes. have you seen any of the late, like the political news that's going on right now? Very little because I cannot handle it right now. So are we going to talk about voting? We're not. We're gonna. Uh, yeah. We're going to talk about voting. Steph's got a really exciting voting story oh, that she wants to share. <laughs> Light needs to be shed. Uh, no, but our amazing president <clears throat> that we're so proud of gave uh, his... I don't even like joking about that, please. ...gave his State of the Union recently. Did you watch any of it? I did not watch the State of the Union, but I did see Nancy... Okay, that's what we're going to talk okay. about. <laughs> Pause and... Pause. Re-enter. So, yeah... Miss Pelosi standing up afterwards and ripping up his speech behind him for all to see and witness, right? So there's been a lot of fallout from that uh, yes. lately. A lot of people have had their uh, feelings hurt. A lot of people have shamed Nancy for how mm -hmm. inappropriate that was mm -hmm. and how childish that was yeah. and all of those kind of different things. Because out of that situation, that was the childish behavior. Right. Yeah. So you've obviously got two sides, two camps, those mm -hmm. that are pro-Trump, those that are anti-Trump, and mm -hmm. everybody is either, yay, Nancy, or uh, what a... <clears throat> I can't believe she did that. Right. Yeah. What do you think of her mm -hmm. actions and behaviors? Because I have a very strong opinion, but I want to hear yours you, first. Oh, boy. Um, well, from what I saw... Just a little bit, because it was mostly people's comments on it. Um, he gave his very heartfelt and felt and honest speech, as he always does. 
always. He's very, um, George Washington cannot tell a lie is what that man is. <laughs> um, anyways, she ripped it in half. She just, she like ripped it. It's yeah. like, okay. <sighs> okay. Hold on. I know this is where, this is what I'm nervous about because I feel like you like to set me up. Oh. You're going to come out with the devil's advocate. You're going to turn it. You're going to get me all hyped up. And then I'm going to feel stupid for getting all emotional. And it's probably something that I'm not even emotional about. But because you come at me with your your poking with and your pattern, that it turns into. So I'm going to try. And I'll just like, tell you my no, thoughts I'm first. I'm still going. It's okay. 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 You tell me your thoughts. But I'm just like, I know what this is. Because your, your body positioning, uh, this you is are ready. Uh, body positioning out of pain. Yeah. I'll have you. You'll Quick side note for listeners, Craig has started jujitsu back up again and his body is suffering immensely for it. Body is doing amazing. But go ahead. Um I do not think I liked it. I you don't know how to say act. I liked the act. She didn't make a big loud like throwing it at him and shredding it up into a million pieces that I saw. Maybe she did. I only saw the whoosh and put it down. I liked it. What he said, there's there's no point to it. And if you are, um, I don't know. <sighs> I have a really, really hard time. Anything that comes from him thinking that there might be value anywhere. That's just, I'm not a supporter of him. <clears throat> I'm not a supporter. I don't, I think all of the harm that he has caused. And it's just, it is what it is, right? He's been caught in too many too many lies there's too much destruction it's horrible 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 things that that person has done and is allowing other people to do i don't have any support i don't have any i i just i can't like i want to find something i like right just so it doesn't suck but i can't um i think the more people that speak out and can stand up to somebody like him the better. She, she just ripped it. She just ripped it and was like, this is pointless. Or maybe she was like, I don't want to get it mixed up with the important papers. She was definitely making a statement. Okay, I know. It wasn't, uh, uh, just, you know, this I know. is my scratch She was making paper. a statement, but I liked her statement. I agreed with her statement. And what is the statement that you interpreted I as? interpreted it as... Um, fuck this president and well, fuck his speech. Kind of, yeah. That's kind of exactly. the statement, right? Fuck this shit. I had to sit through this bullshit. This is nonsense. It's, it's, it never it's changes. Over. It's the same shit over and over again. This is, and I'm not saying toxic masculinity because that is not, but he is a toxic person. He is toxic. And I don't see any, so she, she shred it. She's like, if that's her statement, why not? I like it. Yeah. So I'm not giving any more than that. <coughs> so I'm going to be a little, a little devil's advocate. Of course. Just very, very little though. If we're like going to talk about devil. professionalism, anything that that man does, I baby mean, devil advocate. Okay, in between is okay. so I can already feel it coming. Can you? I'm not even. You haven't even said it yet, and I'm like, here we go, mother. <laughs> You're ready to fight. <laughs> okay, get okay. yourself some more coffee. So I you am. I am. Up and ready I'm to go. ready. I'm going to start pulling off the the Trump quotes and his disgusting lip biting and Jeffrey Epstein dancing, motherfucker. All right. <laughs> I don't think any of those things are related, but that's okay. They're all related. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, now I'm okay. So I was thinking about it because I watched some of the fallout from it. I didn't obviously watch the actual union because yeah. nobody got time for that shit. <laughs> but uh, so. most of my news coverage of politics as of late is just simply coming from the Daily Show. I was going to say Trevor yeah. Noah is my anchorman. Exactly. But it's heavily biased, obviously. Yeah. And uh, so I don't ever go look at anything else. Like the other side, I'm not watching Fox News. I'm not watching any of that stuff. Yeah, sometimes <clears throat> I ain't got time for that either. Sometimes I'll have Alexa play it for me. The news? Yeah. Oh, and then I get upset, and then I I make her play Brandy Carlisle so I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> so when I initially saw it, I'm like, oh snap! Like, right? oh my god, I can't believe she just did that. Like, holy cow, that's pretty brazen, right? Look at the big balls on Nancy. Um, but then I sat and thought about it more and the more I looked at it, cause it, you know, you see it in the feeds and yeah. next thing you know, it's a meme and everything like that. Yes. I'm sitting there thinking about it and I'm like, 
this is so silly. Okay. Yeah. Like, it's so silly. Like, I thought about kids, and I thought mm-hmm. about the way that kids fight. Yeah. And kids are like, fuck you. No, fuck you. Like, your mom. No, your mom. And they sit and they just go back and forth, and it solves nothing, right? Yeah. It's petty. It's pointless. And it's not that Nancy suddenly like has the... to take the higher road. But the fact is, like, when you drop down into that level of whatever discourse Mm -hmm. with someone else, right? It never solves anything. Just never, ever, ever solves anything. I thought about the times that I was a police officer. Mm -hmm. And obviously, as a police officer, you have to like be completely affective and just kind of maintain this monotone like you can't let things get to you and blah 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 which is why i could not do that job right everybody's yelling everybody's yelling you know all the shit that you take as a police officer you just have to let it roll off your back and respond with politeness and respond with professionalism and everything like that which i didn't always do there were times that (laughs) times you you were human 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 right and maybe nancy had a human moment I don't think it was planned. I think it was an impulsive moment. I almost moment. guarantee that shit was fucking planned. You almost guarantee? I almost guarantee it was planned because of the way that she did it. Is that like a... Uh... She knew exactly what she was doing. She stood up right... I mean, because they all stand at the end, right? Yeah. And she wasn't going to fucking clap for him. It, it's just all How so How many times petty. have you done something impulsively in the moment and you're like, oh shit, after? Like, don't say never. Uh, don't you dare. I won't say never. Are you going to say almost never? No. You, like, you can almost guarantee. No, in the past, right? Yeah. But very rarely do I do that anymore. Very rarely do I impulsively react to somebody, unless it's like in private, right? Like when you're in your car and you just go off on that fucking retard that (laughs) is driving and they're driving you nuts and whatever, right? Uh, But when confronted with people or when confronted with a situation, I tend to react in a very calm, responsible, assertive way. Would you not agree? No, I would agree. So I feel for the like, most part. for the most part, everybody's human, uh-huh. but I just feel like we don't need to sit and have this silly schoolyard back and forth. Oh my God, she reaction. ripped a piece of paper. Why it's are we attacking inter- her? I'm not attacking her why, at all. This is what, this is I'm what the- I'm judging her. I'm not attacking her. Well, why are we spending all of our attention on that one little act that she did? I mean, if we're going to throw all this out there on things that shall not be done, how about we put it to the bullshit that's up there delivering the shit? Not the speech, the shit. How about we put it on them instead of drawing all that attention Why don't we focus, away onto her? Why don't we focus on positive things instead of what this man is doing? That's my thought. And I'm talking about in the political realm. Okay, so what, what positive is happening? Like, why do we sit and talk about President Trump all the time? Because instead he's of, fucking everything up. Okay, but it's really not. Hmm. He... Appears to be because that's all we're talking about is what this man is fucking okay, up. All okay, the time. Uh, like I said, if I'm I can not see something there. good, give me something good. Yeah, but I'm not sitting like I'm not going to start touting the praises of what he's doing in a positive way because that's what all of the other side likes to do all the time. Look what he's done. He's done this. He's done this. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm just saying, like, why are we even wasting time talking about him? Be- like he's literally the loudest bully on the fucking playground. Yes. Do you know what happens when everybody turns their back to the bully and stops talking about him? He'll come over and he'll start pushing you, right? And he'll start trying to engage mm-hmm. people and he'll start trying to fight people. But when everybody's like, hey, dude, we see you. Uh, we're just choosing not to interact with you because you're a dick. And we all turn our back and we walk away and we all do our own thing. Eventually, that bully is either going to leave or he's going to fall in line so that he can be part of the crowd. So that's a really small scope, right? A really yeah. small version of what's taking place, I think. Yeah, that'd be great. But he surrounds himself with rapists and then he appoints them in the Supreme Court. So I, I don't, I feel like somebody needs to say something Yeah. and things we can't just sit there and, because when we turn our back on him, he has rapists. I think we just make, like, I don't and think he's that, he, I don't think he's that important. He's not. But so the, why the, are we talking about him? Because somehow he slither fucked his grossness into a position of power that is important. I don't think the presidency is very that important though. I kind of think it is. Only because we make it that way. Think about it this way, <laughs> right? Like, just think about the fucking schoolyard, right? The playground. Yeah. If somebody wants to stand up and like hold court and gather everybody's attention, then suddenly he's important. But if we're like, what the fuck? That guy's crazy. We're not listening to him anymore. Yeah, but he somehow became the he's principal. No important. And then he picked all the bullies and he said, gave them all the power. Hmm. Let's rise up. Yeah, let's. So you're talking about. 
Rise up. <laughs> Anyways, we don't have to sit and talk about him anymore. I just wanted to, because I, I was thinking about that, and I'm yeah. like, gosh dang it, I wish she would have done something differently, right? You don't have to stand up and clap. You don't have to give, but you can just simply be like, yeah, I don't agree with this man. Okay. My position dictates that I need to sit in this chair during his speech, which I've performed my job for that aspect, right? But and I don't agree with And then she should go him. quietly? There's nothing about going quietly. Okay, so why, why doesn't are she we get not... on fucking camera afterwards? Why didn't somebody go interview her afterwards? I'm sure that happened. I'm sure it did happen too. So then so, she can say, I don't agree with this man. I don't agree with everything that he just said. That happens. I, Okay. Okay, so let's look at Mitt Romney, okay? He dared the audacity of the same party to speak against the president. Yeah. And the the backlash that's coming from that. Now, he anything that gets said against him in any way, I think more people need to speak not just out. I think more people need to speak out. Do Did nothing, you see what say Mitt nothing said, is not working. Did you see what Mitt said? You didn't, did you watch what he said? I did. Okay. How he professional assert like Mitt just simply stood up and kind of spoke truth. So I I think he I, didn't stand up and rip the Constitution up and wipe his ass with it. That's say, not what Nancy did. Why is she? Is it because she is? It's because she has a vagina. I don't know why we're arguing. <laughs> Excuse me, a vulva? I didn't. Is it because she's a woman? Not at all, baby. She stood up and she ripped a piece of paper in half. And oh my God, the audacity of that woman. What the fuck? I'm not saying the audacity of that woman. I'm saying I think that we should have a higher level of discourse that takes place other than petty little things like that. Especially on the national stage. Okay, I, I can hear that. That's all. I still think you go. Like, uh, oh, God. Trump's a fucking idiot. We know that. Yes. Okay. That doesn't mean that we all need to come down to his fucking retarded I level. I agree completely. In order to engage with him. I agree completely. That's but all. the fact that this is still a conversation is bullshit, that we're turning it on her actions and everything is about her action on ripping a piece of paper in half. Like, oh, my God. That's where the focus is. Shut up. Get over it. I'm over it. <clears throat> I, I just wanted to bring it up. I wasn't saying that directly to you. <laughs> I was like putting that out there. Like everything that he does is a smoke and mirrors. The shit gets blown up like that. So we don't see what he's doing over on the sidelines. He'll be like, aha, look over here. Look over here. Okay, fine. You good? I don't think so. Can we move on now? Probably not. Okay. So <laughs> that's, we're good enough there. We talked about Miss Pelosi mm -hmm. and her paper ripping. So I'm going to read you some things from Facebook. I'll give you some backstory. This is what I've been waiting to talk to you about. Oh, God. Oh, that was a light thing? <laughs> that was housekeeping? <laughs> yeah. Shit. That's just some housekeeping for the podcast. We thought we'd get that off the plate. Great. And uh, now we can actually get to the main course. That was I'm an already appetizer. already got a headache. Oh, baby, it's not bad. Okay. So this, uh, what I'm about to read you took place on a Facebook page, a group page, right? Okay. So it's a... It's, everybody knows what a Facebook group is. No, <laughs> I don't. Need I to don't. Explain it. What Shut is up. it? It's is when, it dot com? <laughs> it's when a group of people get together and create a page on Facebook, I'm and just then kidding. they name it something, and then they all get on there and post dumb shit. Uh, that's what it is. Okay. But this took place on a Facebook group. I won't mention which one. Oh, okay. Because that's not ask. important to okay. the story. All right, let's do this. Um, and the individual that posted this, we don't need to worry about mentioning that because that's not important to the story. Okay. But it was a big long. Clearly, post. she didn't. Or the person didn't wrap up. You know how sometimes half. people will take the time to. You uh, didn't even let me go I, you with that. Yeah, I didn't. I'm above. I I'm moving on from. Oh, Pelosi. is it because you have a penis? <sighs> You're about to see it. <laughs> okay, well, that isn't a threat. That's oh, a well, hey. Oh. What you doing over there? You want me to talk about Nancy? I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how she ripped it up again. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so it was a big, long post, mm -hmm. and I took the time to read through all of it, which I typically don't. Yeah. Most people don't, I think. Um, and essentially, this this guy shared two quotes um, from some people in the past. Okay. And um, he was talking about how he himself was struggling with these quotes in the context of his perception, uh, his thoughts, his feelings, his emotions, his life, all that kind of stuff. These really kind of triggered him in a sense. So he was bringing it to the group as kind of an open discussion. About past quotes. About these two quotes that I'm about to read to you. Okay. Um, 
I'm usually not one to get on Facebook and share my thoughts. Yeah. Right. And I didn't in this case. You didn't? No, because I'm really not that guy. Because unless I know you, Mm -hmm. and I don't know this man, unless I know you, I don't want to have some discourse back and forth because I don't really know you, right? And so anyways, I thought, you know what, rather, because I really wanted to. You did? I did. I really wanted to add my two cents into this uh, Are you going to add it on the podcast? And I thought, you know what, I'll just save it for my wife. All right. Because she knows me. I'm excited. And we can have a conversation about it. Let's do this. So I'm going to read you the first one. Let's hear it. Uh, Like I said, it would help if you could read the whole thing, but you don't need the (laughs) entire context of all of it. Okay. And um, I'm going to quote the people in the post or in the quotes. Okay. (laughs) I'm not going to quote the people. I'm going to reference the people in the quotes. Okay. So the first one is Rod Stryker, who apparently is a yogi and coach. So we're going to get the the comments before the quotes? No. Okay. No, you're not going to get the context of his post, just the quotes themselves. You are going to, okay. So the quote is, just accept the fact that women are closer to enlightenment than you are, and they always will be. A woman who is balanced will always be a much more significant force in this world that a, than a man who is balanced. Stop being threatened by women in general. And then see what you can do to elevate womankind without expecting anything in return. Then you can figure out how to help keep even one of them truly happy. Then if you can figure out how to keep even one of them truly happy, you've accomplished a great thing in your life. So that's quote number one. We'll talk about it and then we'll go to quote number two. Do you want me to reread it? No, I think I'm okay for right now. What are your thoughts initially? I feel like it's a trap. Um, It's not a trap. I'm not looking (laughs) to trap you. This isn't a Pelosi paper ripping incident. Um, I do, first of all, accept the fact that women are more enlightened than you are. Um, Are you thinking about all the dumb women you know? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No. I'm thinking about um, how this like falls into the conversation we've had of um, people. Not men, not women, not toxic masculinity, not toxic femininity. I think I said that right. Um, There's toxic people. And there's... That actually, I think that's bullshit. That's, I think that's harmful and that is destructive behavior. When the, the men, sentiment behind the, the quote. sentiment behind the quote, when men behave that way, it is, um, it causes the same thing. That's, I don't think that's a healthy thing at all because you're immediately saying just like the flip side of that of, Men are better, that women are garbage, and you're saying now that women are better and men are garbage, and that is not the case. I think, like, literally, it's not just, like, my belief of one cannot survive without the other. Literally, one cannot survive without the other. It's a union. It's we all have our part, and to say, to tell, look at a little boy and say you're never going to be enough is the exact same with looking at a little girl and saying you're never going to be enough. Don't do that. That's That's... That's just sad. That's just sad is what that is. Equal. Just accept the fact that we all are humans and can be enlightened at whatever level. We all have our positives. We all have our negatives. We are all, let's rise together instead of trying to signify one above the other. I don't like that. And then. (laughs) So I don't know anything about Rod Stryker. Yeah. Right. Uh, the only thing I have is the information from the post, yogi and coach. So uh-huh. I'm, I'm assuming he's... I've seen stuff. Like the name was familiar. Oh, really? But like, I I don't have... Um, it's not like, oh, it's raw. You know, I have all this information. I was like, oh, like I've seen like things, but... Okay. Uh, so I'm assuming I think... from my interpretation that he's one of those spiritually enlightened yogi coach people, right? That's going to talk about stuff, which obviously we relate to, we connect with. As and so, people. As people. Uh, just accept the fact that women are closer to enlightenment than you are, and they always will be. So the very first sentence, Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that this is in reference to talking to men specifically, right? 
so he's ref- in some way, shape, I, I, or form. I, I, mm-hmm. This quote is directed towards men specifically, mm-hmm. and probably men that have an issue or that are dealing in some way, shape, or form. Stopped being stopped being threatened by them. I do like right. Yes. And that right off the page or right off the bat, that very first sentence, I was sitting there thinking about that. Um, and I a hundred percent agree with it. Like if we think about rather than enlightenment, I think about connectedness. Okay. And I think about connected to the universe, right? In my mind, enlightenment is a deep connection to the universe. I agree. A deep connection to self, to the planet, to the universe, mm-hmm. just to energy, right? Mm-hmm. In my mind, enlightenment is a really deep seated rooted connection to energy. Mm-hmm. I 100% agree that women are more connected than men are. Okay. Right. No. Is, is that um is that an actual that they is it um hold on where's my words? Is that because they are more in tune to their emotion, they're allowing their feelings and their emotions more than men? Is it a is it an action or is it an ability that you're saying? Are they First off it's I'm talking in generalities, right? Okay. Like generally speaking, women are more, right? There's always cases where women aren't and when men are and individuals and all that kind of stuff. But I'm talking in general, over okay. the course of history and time, mm-hmm. I believe women are more connected to energy than men are. Um, Again, is it a conscious decision because they're open or is it an ability thing? Where it's an ability thing. You think that in my mind, okay. it is. So the way that I started to think about it in my brain was... Mm-hmm. Um, if we just assume that what I just said was fact, which we aren't, <laughs> right? Uh, but if we just assume for sake of argument that that's the case, that women okay. are more connected to energy in a sense, hence okay. more enlightened than men are. Mm-hmm. Um, men are always going to be more physically strong than women are, period. There's okay. not really room I for... I can see where you can look at it like that right? as a general thing. And yeah. so... Yeah, case by case basis, there's going to be stronger women than strong, you know, men mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But okay. in general speaking, men physically are bigger, stronger, and faster than women are. Okay. So we have that physical uh, strength that is an attribute that is just genetically part of who we are because we're a man. So to balance the scale, women are more connected. I, I don't think it has anything to do with balancing some scale. Okay. I just, I'm using it for the context of, we're not going to argue about men just across the board being bigger, stronger, and faster than women are. And I think on the same page, like, the, you know what I mean? The opposite side of that is women are more connected than men are. I'm not saying balancing the scale is a, so we each have our complementary statements that we can give to Joe. I'm just like, that proves my one cannot exist without the other. Right. We, so like we, we exactly. have these strengths and we have these connections, but I think they go hand in hand. I think I think they do go hand in hand, but I think men are men are connected as well. I'm not oh God. I hate this conversation because anytime it feels like I am such a bad woman because right now it is about women rising up and stopping this and every time I'm like try to say they are the same it's like oh i'm just i'm bringing the women down but i don't believe that i think that yes women like we can make babies and we're growing humans and so yes there's more nurturing that we have to be at that time but that is i think men have just been too conditioned and trained to shut it off i think it is just there if we're talking if we're talking actions and willingness, yes, women are generally more. But ability, I think. Hmm, I don't know. I don't like this. I think we all have all of these qualities and traits. Yeah. But over the course of history, uh, women have been focused in this area and men have been focused in that area. Yeah, but if you look at them as children. I know. Have little boys and little girls running around. It is the same until they start to shift from programming. I don't think it's programming at all. Because I'm like in my mind when I was reading these things, I was going back to when we were like living in small tribes and we were hunters and gatherers and everything was about connection and everything was about survival and everything was about the, you know, the not just the connection to each other, but also to the land and to Mother Nature and all those kind of things. 
that's where I was going in my head when I was reading these things and thinking about this. I wasn't comparing this to present day life. I wasn't comparing this I'm, to the I'm current state of multiple. masculinity and femininity in the world today. And the because that to me is like it's just a fucked yeah. uh, place right now. So I was thinking about it from the context of over the course of time and history, what we have been. Yeah, my brain can do that too, and it was. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm definitely not attacking you. No, I don't feel attacked. I just feel like, I, I'm like, this is kind of sad. Well. I'm sorry. I'm going to go tell you as a little boy that you are every much as connected. And maybe yours looks different. Maybe you're connected to different things. But you are every much, every bit as much. And you are able. I'm not going to look at you and tell you, well, you're a man, so you're not able. I totally I think agree. So sad. I totally agree that you are just as connected, but in different ways. Right? Yeah. And um, those are the things that we have lost over time yeah. where we're not looking at those things. But I think the fact is that women are closer. Closer to enlightenment. Meaning that they God, are. such garbage. Maybe it is. That's why we're talking about it. Yeah. Because I agree with you that men are just as connected, but in different ways. Right? Because once again, I'm thinking about back in the day. And like when we lived on the land, like we were just highly tuned in as animals were mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. we were able to hear smell feel you know all of those kind of different things men and women both but men had to have like just a slightly tweaked up version of it mm -hmm. because the majority of the time they were the ones that were out hunting mm -hmm. right it's not to say that women didn't have survival instinct or have that skill set or anybody that existed back then when we were living on the land had that i'm sure mm -hmm. But men had to have something that was just slightly different, more connected in some way, shape, or form. Same with women. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Same with women, just on a different, different set of... Spell. Uh, Scale, not spell. Yeah, another it end of the spectrum. Too, yeah. And so I agree with you in that regard. So we can immediately take off that first sentence as bullshit. <laughs> oh, I, we're just on the first. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> A woman who is balanced will always be a much more significant force in this world than a man who is balanced. Okay, that's bullshit, right? That's just bullshit. Oh, I agree with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> yeah, but it's just not, I mean, it's just no, not the case, right? No. And the part of this that I don't like is the split between the two, right? Mm -hmm. I think balancedness, even though that's not really a word, um, comes through connection. Mm -hmm. And I think it doesn't, obviously it doesn't always have to be a connection between a man and a woman, mm -mm. but it comes through connection with people. People. Right. Yeah. So whether you choose to connect, it doesn't matter what the connection source is, but that's where true balance comes from. So you're never going to achieve some level of super balanced, connected enlightenment Unless you are connected with people. You're just not. Mm -hmm. That's my belief. I don't think the yogi or the fucking highly spiritual person that goes on their 10-year silent retreat by themselves out into the fucking wilderness to commune with the fucking universe is ever going to be truly connected. Yeah. Because they're trying to connect by themselves. Mm -hmm. And you could argue that... And then that, come back and say, we are all one, we are all connected, but I could only reach it by myself yeah like yeah well it's not even i can only reach it by myself but i think in my mind when i think about that yes you're going to get super deeply connected to the universe when you go out there and do that and Agreed. you could argue that the connection that i'm talking about the the need to connect with something else or with someone else mm -hmm. is the universe and so yeah. perhaps they have achieved some level but i i don't i think they probably reached some pinnacle spot and then they stopped and they couldn't go further because they couldn't realize that there was more because they didn't have somebody else there with them. Yeah. I think that true deep connection that allows you to go like deeper into yourself, deeper into your connection with the universe, deeper mm -hmm. into connection with other people, all stems from a deep connection with people. The right people. The right people. Get into some careful where you're spending your energy, careful where you're sharing your energy and who you're sharing it with. So the know, next... maybe, maybe that's because I'm not connected enough, even though I'm a woman well, and technically by default I am. <laughs> you're so. more connected. I do like, see what you can do to elevate womankind without expecting anything in, current, in, in return. I do. But I think we just need to get rid of womankind. 
just see what you can do to elevate others. There's see what you can do to elevate your fellow human, right? Yes. The people that you are connected to. See, doesn't to. that feel so much better? Yeah. That, it makes that so just much feels more light. sense. That just feels, yes. Yeah. Then if you can figure out how to help keep even one of them truly happy, um, and you've that, accomplished a great thing in your life. That, because your, your eyebrows just won't, you know what I heard. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> even one of them even happy? Like, even one of them happy? Like, Good don't luck. say shit like that, fucker. <laughs> That's how you keep it. <laughs> don't be... Wouldn't it be nice if your period brought positive? Shut up. <laughs> like, like, let's just, you know, that one. Yeah, if you can manage to keep one of them happy, then you've at least accomplished something in your life. Yeah, again, I can't. I Every time that comes out, I'm just like, excuse the fuck out of me. What? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's talking to you, dude. You'll be keeping yourself happy for the next 15 years. Thank you very much. It's just you and your hand tonight. Thank you, Pink. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think that, once again, if we just eliminate men and women from the situation, right? I think it is incredibly important to learn how to, like, keep even one of them truly happy. Like, what's another way to phrase that? Um, let's stop. Let's stop assaulting them and controlling them. Like, let's try that. Let's stop using our brute strength to, like... That's a good start. Okay. Yes, that is a good start, but that's not where we're headed and what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, well, okay. I'm sorry. Did I go in the wrong direction? Well, lucky for you, you've got a man uh, to keep you on track. Technically, I'm like, I think based off of that, wherever I decide we're going is where we're going because I'm the one that's connected. So <laughs> we are going this way. Let's talk about parking lots. <laughs> Women, well, see, you don't even get it. I don't. Women, lots. yeah, every woman out there is like, yeah, like you, you have to be 100% on your game going through parking lots. You have to be on your game. You have to be looking for the threats everywhere. You have to be looking for the other women driving. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I walked right into that one. Hold on. They're, they're just driving like idiots trying to get out of the parking lot because there's like, never mind. Anyways. I'm not even going to finish that. Uh, in my mind, this last sentence. Men. If you Drivers can figure out how to help keep even one of them out. truly happy, you've accomplished a great thing in life. I think what that, in my mind, like we could rephrase that, that would not just resonate more, but make more sense is if you can figure out how to sustain and connect and grow that deep connection throughout your life with other people, right? It mm -hmm. doesn't always have to be with one other person. I think they're trying to talk about a significant other. Is that what he's I think doing? so, okay. right? So right. with your significant other, if you have that deep level of connection that you can continually grow and expand and develop and dive into, then you've accomplished something in your life. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay. Would you agree with that? Um, it's a little bit easier. With the connect, yeah, connection, absolutely. But yeah. that's your... Yeah, that's a people thing. Exactly. That's also. Yeah, I don't like the like uh, the. I feel like the only message that that is and is something that is so against is you have to make. You have to like be mean to yourself, and and take yourself out of the equation, one hundred percent, and focus everything on the other person, and you can't like that doesn't work. Like that's. That just doesn't work. You have to you have to matter for yourself. And I don't feel like you have to make yourself like come across as less than to show love to somebody else. You can stand up in all of your wonderfulness and show your love to somebody else. You don't have to be like, well, I'm not good enough. You, you are the one that is worthy. I'm just garbage. Like that's that. I don't. I don't know. I feel like, look at here I am. This is who I am. And I honor who you are. That that should be the message. I agree. Are you ready for the second quote? <sighs> no, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so this one apparently is from way earlier on in history. Okay. Uh, like I, if I remember correctly, from like the 30s or 40s. I need to, I think, okay, go ahead. Uh, from somebody named Napoleon Hill. And then there's Not a, dynamite. No. Okay. Uh, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're taking fucking life <laughs> advice from Napoleon Dynamite. Gosh. But um, 
no, the quote is from Napoleon Hill and then Think and Grow Rich. So I don't know if it was a book or something like okay. that. I'm assuming so. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm going to read it all. <sighs> okay. Some men know that they are being influenced by the women of their choice, their wives, sweethearts, mothers, or sisters, but they tactfully refrain from rebelling against the influence because they are intelligent enough to know that no man is happy or complete without the modifi modifying influence of the right woman. The man who does not recognize this important truth deprives himself of the power which has done more to help men achieve success than all other forces combined. Okay. Mm. I just ate the mic. Obviously, in reading it and hearing it, you can mm -hmm. tell that it's from a uh, a time period where things were a little bit different, mm -hmm. right? Maybe, maybe not that maybe. different. Maybe not that different. <laughs> um, well, if partners, connection. <sighs> okay. The, what about homosexual men? That's what I'm saying, right? It doesn't apply. Right. So it's just people. They're, yeah. That's the only way it'll make sense is people. Yeah. I agree. Like, so, sorry, dudes. You almost made it, but it's not enough. But do you, but do you think like the, the person, I'm just going to read it with the, person? the context, the person who does not recognize this important truly deprives themselves of the power, which has done more to help people achieve success than all other forces combined. That's the stronger together statement. Right. That, 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 I that, think that if I'm last hearing part, that right. Because if you think about how much <clears throat> over the course of history people have done mm -hmm. because of the people that they love. True. Right? Manipulation. And because of too. the. Oh, fuck, baby. I'm not talking about that. Why? You, can, you have to bring it everything. It's like this action is because of this, because of love. And then you have ill intent coming from men or women, people that can cause reaction. I don't know. Can't everybody just get we along? Could, we could say that every war that's ever been fought okay. was for love. Can you? Yeah. I can. I just said it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> it might not be true. Maybe I, complete I'm, bullshit. Uh, no, well, I, I want to... Th I, I'm having a hard time thinking that. So think about the wars that are fought today and how they're for money. Uh-huh. What does are money represent? For, for love of money? Is that why? No. What does money represent? Power. Power. What so is power? For love of power. Power. So in my mind, if we break down what money represents, if I have money, mm -hmm. I can provide for my family. I can safety. Sa safety, security, all those type of things. Okay. So hence, survival. Survival. Love. Okay. Protecting the ones that I love. Oh, okay. I see how you did that. Okay. Well, we'll explain Hitler then. In Hitler's mind, from what we know. Okay. Because obviously I have no idea what was in Hitler's mind. Right? He had a belief system. Yeah. And he was trying to protect the ones that he loved. <sighs> Look, uh, it's not applicable to Hitler. Okay. <laughs> but I'm just talking about in big, broad strokes, especially in the context of this silly quote. Okay. Um, how many things have been done throughout the course of history and time because of not just the love that you have for the people that you love and care about, but because of what you've been able to accomplish because of their love and support? I think about that, how much you have fits. driven me in the sense, how much you have supported me, how much oh, the love that you and I have and how much it has, do you know what I mean? Like even in the darkest moments, how much that has been able to be the thing that holds me up and keeps me afloat and sp spurn isn't the right word, but uh, sparks me to move forward. Thank goodness we didn't start any wars. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I, I think, once again, we can eliminate men and women and, and just people. people. Some people know that they are being influenced by the people of their choices, their spouses, their sweethearts, their mothers, their siblings, but they tactfully refrain. Actually, we could say parents instead of mothers. Yes. But they tactfully refrain from rebelling against the influence because they are intelligent enough to know that no one is happy or complete without the modifying influence of the right person. Okay. Of the right person. That was going to be my argument. I'm like, oh, 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 right person. And I, okay. I could almost agree 100% with that. The right person. Because yeah. this is one thing that I've thought about, you and I. Yeah. Like, it's really easy to think that you don't need one person, right? And the people that 
aren't in some long-term committed relationship, the people that have decided to be single the rest of their life, the people that never actually get married, or do you know what I mean? It could be argued that that is a way to live your life Mm -hmm. and that those people are happy and that everything's fine. And I would agree with that. Yeah. But I believe that when you connect with one person, singular, right? Sensation. (laughs) Every step (laughs) that you take. When you connect with one person on an incredibly deep level, you are able to go deeper into yourself, into connection as a whole, and into your connection with the universe, enlightenment, spirituality, energy, whatever. And I I truly believe that that comes from that deep connection. You don't have to have romantic um, undertones, right? You can love somebody without making love to them. You can have compassion, you can have sensuality, you can have connection. All of these things can take place without some romantic relationship. So you can have a best friend that you dive super deep with and that you have a really strong connection and bond with. Uh, You don't have to be connected in a quote unquote, not plutonic, uh, you know what I'm saying. Yes. But I think you have to have that one person. You have to have that, at least that one person. At least that one person. And it can be the partner that is, but it doesn't have to be. Mm -mm. I like that. Yes, I agree with that. That was my experience with you. And I think that you can't have the depth of connection Mm -hmm. with a bunch of people. Like there's probably people listening that are like, but, but, but wait, I've got tons of friends that I'm super connected with. Yeah, that's great. And that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I think that's cool. But I think the true depth that I'm talking about only comes when you allow yourself to do it with one person. Because it's almost like a bandwidth thing, right? I can't open up to you, meaning you, my love, in the incredible, open, vulnerable way that I can if I'm trying to do that with five other people. Yeah. It doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a bandwidth where I don't have the capacity to sustain that flow of energy when I'm trying to do it with, do you know what I mean, multiple Mm -hmm. people. So I think you can be incredibly connected with a bunch of people. But the true depth that I'm talking about, the place that like, you know, not just amazing things happen, but where you can really discover like whatever, true love or uh, true True, enlightenment, true self, true true self. I think that comes with one-on-one connection. What do you think? I'm going to have to agree with that. I'm going to have to agree. I think the... uh, I have to agree. I think that it could be heard that it's only like you're saying, having multiple, multiple people in your life. Cause you, you do get fed from other areas, but it all like trickles into the, the main source. So, and that main source, whatever it is, whether it's like you said, your best friend or your partner or yeah, I can, I can throw my weight on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that like, feels, um, that feels, it feels true for me. It feels true for me. So that resonates with me. That feels, that's been my experience with you. And um, there is, yeah, that has been my, and I feel like any relationship, I that's such a tricky word because it's hard to like think relationships, um, Without putting the spousal, like, or I don't even know what other word to use, contacts with it. But any other relationship out there in any form has, I don't know. I think I'm really fucking distracted. I'm sorry. I keep, like, going over here and then I'm thinking of all these other things that I can't say and that does this and, like, I have questions. And so my brain is... (laughs) Spinning all over the place. It is because this is a very thought provoking and I want to like dive into it deeper, but I don't feel like, um, I, I need to let it percolate a little bit more, but what you're saying, like, I feel very connected to that and it makes it open just a little bit more. Yeah. I think what you said about being Mm. fed from other sources, I think that's important, right? I'm not talking about having this deep level of connection with one singular person and only that person, 
I think you need to have connections with a lot of people mm-hmm. and you get fed from those connections and everything like that. To a point. Yeah, I'm not saying like in the junk food way of eating all the fucking fries, right? You get to connect with whoever and it feeds you and helps you grow and that connection is a benefit. And the deeper you connection, the deeper the connection you have with that one singular person, the better you're going to be able to connect with those multiple people as well. Like think about the... <laughs> Just think about our children. Yeah. Think about the context of our kids and the connection that we have with our children. I think it has been um, strengthened, and I think that it has benefited from our connection, you and I. Yeah. Right? Where they're separate from each other, but they're not in one in some way, shape, or form. But because you and I are able to have this deep level of connection, I think that has in turn allowed us to have a deeper connection with our children. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about, the people in your life, right, mm-hmm. that you choose to connect with. I could also, um, <laughs> like, I feel that, but I don't know. And there's times, like, I also think that I'm having a really hard time right now. I'm super emotional. This That's is okay, like, baby. We're I almost can, done. Yeah. We can actually wrap up if you'd like, or we can I keep going. I, I'm just, like, I feel bad because, um. I'm just like, I've got all these emotions coming up, but I just, and I don't even know why. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm kind of, hmm, feel stupid. Um, I could also go, hang on. I'm also okay without people, you know, it's not saying that, oh, I can reach all those levels of, and by a lot of people, like I could, I could thrive in <laughs> some place with you, you know, I could thrive. I think. I think we. I don't know. Maybe I couldn't. I, I think the I truth could. of the matter is you and I would be happy. Yeah. If we lived on some deserted island with just the two of us. And I think we would thrive and I think we would be happy and I think everything would be wonderful. And I think we would continue into the depth of our connection and find new levels and all that kind of stuff. But I also think that we would be out of balance. Yeah. And I think we would need the balance of connections with other people. Yeah. You're right. So. Sometimes I don't want that. Yeah. Sometimes I. Man. Man. We need some sunshine up in here. I am gloomy. (laughs) I am so gloomy. I am ready just for tears and all kinds of stuff. I don't know what's happening. I am gloomy. I got sad. I don't even know why. Well, There's something in my eye. It's not not just like covering up a tear because I'm totally like trying to hold back tears, but there's legitimately like an eyelash or something in my eye. There's something in my eye. (laughs) Uh So those are those quotes. Those are the things that I wanted to talk about. A little thought provoking, uh, apparently. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's it's weird. I can see how I think about all the work that I've done with men Mm -hmm. and all the men that I've been connected to in the last few years. And I can see how stuff like this would be really hard for them to process, really hard for them to think about. Because men have such a hard time with women and such a hard time in that balance and in that space and in that connection and all that kind of stuff. That's why it's kind of hard to even give the praises to the men on that part, because it feels like you have to like smash them down to get the, and that's, that's what's happening. Yeah. That's not it. You don't have to break them down to build them up. You can just treat them differently. Sorry. Go ahead. No, you're okay. No, I'm so sorry. You're right. You can treat them differently. When I was reading through this stuff, because obviously this was a man that wrote this big Facebook post and I was thinking, I don't know him, Mm -hmm. like I told you. And I was thinking about him, and he shared some more personal things in the post itself and just used these quotes as kind of a um, catalyst for conversation. And I was sitting there thinking about this man that I don't know, and I was thinking about why he's struggling with these two quotes and in the context of his life and undoubtedly relationships and things like that with women. I just kept thinking about him as a little boy. And for me, it's just like, if I can look at a man and then picture him as a little boy, then everything he's experiencing right now makes total sense. Yeah. Like it makes total fucking sense. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, of course you have this issue or of course you're struggling with this. Yeah. Or of course this is a place of contention, internal turmoil inside of you and all this kind of stuff because you're a little fucking boy. 
right? Yeah. And it's not minimizing and, you know, chastising him and treating him like he's a child. Yeah. But it's just looking at it from that perspective of, uh, oh, you're st- not stuck in a way, but it's, I mean, it's just reality. We all have that thing where the shit that happens to us as kids and the ways that things took place when we were children continually affect us for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Regardless of how much work we think we've done or how enlightened we think we are. And so. Yeah. It's the, the trap with that is some people use that as an excuse too. Yes. But well, then I'm... you can even use that. Mm-hmm. The fact that they use it as an excuse to look at them as a child even more. Yeah. Because think about the kid that will sit there and be like, no. And then they start pouting and throwing a fit because they're a kid. Yeah. It's the exact same behavior. I still want it to stop. Like, <laughs> you still want the tantrum to stop. Yeah, but I mean... You still expect them to act older, act their age. Like these are... Like if you've been harmful to people for things that have happened, like it, you don't have to keep doing it. You don't have to keep doing it. Well, until that child learns differently, they will. Yeah. Because they're survival mechanisms and coping mechanisms. Yeah. I hope it doesn't sound like that I'm trying to keep women small. When I defend, like, I don't think you're keeping women well, small at all, babe. I kind of feel like that that might be the impression that I give. Like, no, 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 women don't rise up too much. That is not what I'm saying. I'm just saying <laughs> through my clarity here with my words that I'm able to express that um, I just think women and men, people can rise up together. I don't think, I just really don't think we have to stomp one out. I just think behaviors have to change all around. I don't think we have to stop one out so another one can have their turn. I think we can share it. Connect together. Yeah. Strive and achieve and grow together. No more one-upping or having to step on each other or any of that nonsense. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I agree, baby. (laughs) Thank you very much for taking time to sit down and <laughs> listen to the emotional. podcast, folks that are listening. <laughs> I wasn't thanking you. Why not? This is uh, this was an effort for me today. I got emotional. I yeah. think you should think. Good job, yeah. baby. Yeah, I, my humor got me. Okay. I'm not, I'll stay. <laughs> Let's go. You were supposed to giggle before. <laughs> okay, everybody. Thanks for listening. And tune in next week. When we talk about our uh, something else. <laughs> it's going to be a comedy episode next week. <laughs> I love you, Steph. I love you, Craig. She stood up and she ripped a piece of paper in half. And oh my God, the audacity of that woman. Enlightenment is a really deep-seated, rooted connection to energy. Men have just been too conditioned and trained to shut it off. Look at the big balls on Nancy.